looking to build an absolutely enormous back and a massive deadlift to go along with it, here are three exercises guaranteed to blow up your deadlift and take your gains to the next level. What's up guys, Alec on Kiri here, and today we're gonna talk about building a massive deadlift. There really is nothing more primal than ripping a massively heavy weight off the floor. So every serious lifter should be able to deadlift at least a respectable amount of weight. And I find that a lot of novice and intermediate guys actually often underestimate how much progress they can make on this lift in the medium and even in the short term, because frankly, deadlifts just hit different man they're just fucking hard right the max outs are hard the work required to build it is hard and they often make you really damn sore as well but with a slight recalibration in mindset and a little bit of judicious effort most of us can ultimately vastly exceed our initial expectations in terms of what is possible for our deadlifting strength so today we will be discussing a few exercises and techniques aimed at helping you build a bigger stronger back and posterior chain and move more weight through the deadlift pattern so let's jump right into it and i just want to take a quick minute to thank hume health for sponsoring today's video this is the Body Pod by Hume Health, a highly advanced health tracking scale that uses a patented bioelectrical impedance frequency that the makers claim has a 97% correlation with DEXA scans, making it perhaps the ultimate readily accessible tool for accurate body analysis. Kind of like an in-body scan that you can do from the comfort of your own home literally anytime you want. The Body Pod seamlessly connects to the Hume Health app on your phone, and within five minutes of opening the box, you'll have a highly detailed full body scan tracking metrics such as body fat percentage, bone mass, fat free mass, subcutaneous fat, visceral fat, muscle and fat mass in every single limb, muscle and fat mass in the trunk, and much, much more. And it's really cool to get back this entire profile and scan of your body. You can see if you have muscular imbalances between limbs, you can make sure you aren't carrying too much visceral fat, aka heart attack fat, a metric that many of us probably haven't really been able to track. And you can easily track body composition changes over time to make sure that your health metrics are headed in the right direction. So it's a really awesome product that can give you a lot more insight into how your body is responding to your training over time, which can help you learn how to get more out of it and really take control of your health in the process. If this is something that you're interested in, be sure to check out the link in the description down below. Discount code ONKIRI gets you 15% off your order. I hope you guys enjoy. And again, I want to thank Hume Health for sponsoring today's video. Now I'm going to start this video right off with a little bit of a curveball. So up to this point, most of this series that I've been doing has covered movements and assistance exercises that are designed to build the target exercise. So that is movements outside of the actual exercise itself. In this particular case, however, the best movement to build a big deadlift is probably actually the deadlift itself done with sub-maximal weights, sub-maximal intensities at least initially. Now hear me out. Within the context of a properly designed strength training program, you don't have to do anything crazy or even include any fancy exercises to build a big deadlift. All you really have to do is log a bunch of high quality sub-maximal reps and the deadlifts will come along for the ride. The thing is, a strong person will automatically have a big deadlift by default. Sure, depending on your leverages and the techniques that you employ, there's voodoo magic that you can do to materialize a big deadlift, even if you aren't actually that strong. But on the flip side, a strong person will always have a big deadlift by default. If you don't have a big deadlift, then you aren't strong. Sorry, point blank. And part of the problem is people who want to build a big deadlift often deadlift too heavy too often. They inadvertently hamstring their own progress by overshooting too often on what is in reality probably the single most taxing weight room movement that you can perform. It can literally 
take weeks to bounce back to full strength after a taxing deadlift session. You cannot say this about any other exercise in existence. I dare you to fucking try. So what I like to do is I create a strength training program that makes people get very strong in the long run over time. And along with that, I give them a moderate dose of sub-maximal deadlifting for months on end, right? Now, what happens is these people get very, very good at the act of deadlifting. They build a lot of skill at the movement. It becomes second nature. And they do this while they are getting very, very strong with everything else. And so with this approach, we can often take a guy who's never done rep work with just, for example, more than three plates, right? We can let that guy test the waters one day as we conclude a particular training cycle. And we'll often find that he can easily deadlift 400 or maybe even 450 pounds. Now, if we get that same guy repping in the mid or the high 300s at relatively the same RPEs, suddenly he becomes a 500 pound deadlifter without even ever having done a rep with 400 pounds in his entire life. I have enacted that exact scenario multiple times. I'm not making it up. It is something that can happen and does happen often. And this approach also leaves the future wide open for us because now we have all these ace cards up our sleeves, right? Where we can actually start to jack up the intensity later on in the training career. We can jack up the intensity of the workload. The average training weights that they use become a little bit heavier relative to their one rep max instead of always solely relying on that sub-maximal work in our training like we did early on. So then because they've never really experienced that, it provides a massive stimulus. It leads to another big round of gains. So never underestimate the utility or the value of sub-maximal deadlifting work. It is probably the single most important factor that you can do, the type of thing that you can do to lay your foundation for a big deadlift. And I've seen it build respectable deadlifters time and time again. Once you have become a highly skilled deadlifter, however, there's also going to be immense value in branching out now, in using other movements to build the strength and the size of the deadlifting muscles in order to raise the ceiling of your deadlifting potential. So here's where exercise number two comes in, and this is basically just an entire category of movements, but pure hinging exercises such as good mornings and Romanian deadlift variations. Those are going to yield probably the greatest long-term carryover into the deadlift because they absolutely trash the erectors, the hamstrings, and the glutes. As well, the inclusion of a true eccentric phase in these movements where the muscles are lengthened to end range under massive loads is good for hypertrophy as well as building hamstring strength, mobility, and resilience. The hamstrings are a very important part of deadlifting, but they actually don't get taxed fully during the conventional or the sumo deadlift. So including hinging exercises like this is a very important component for long-term progression. My personal favorite of these hinging variations and exercises is the SSB good morning done to pins. So the SSB emphasizes the upper back in a way that a straight bar simply cannot mimic and the inclusion of the pins adds a dead stop component that will yield a higher carryover and specificity to deadlifting because now you got to overcome that inertia from a dead stop. You can also grade the range of motion this way. By training to pins, you can train to multiple different heights, which gives you multiple different variations at your disposal. So that's another nice benefit. But you can't really go wrong here, man. Regular good mornings with the straight bar, regular good mornings with the SSB, as well as pin good mornings with the straight bar are also going to be really good options as well. Romanian deadlift variations have a lot of similarities to good mornings, but they do offer a few slightly different benefits as well. For one, they tax the upper back less because now the bar is in your hands rather than on your shoulders. But with that, there's going to be a little bit more specificity to deadlifting because you're holding the bar just like you would be during a deadlift. They also require far more weight to be used than good mornings because the lever arm acting on the hips is much smaller. Now this favorable leverage is a good and useful thing when it is implemented judiciously. The use of more weight can spur on more gains simply due to the absolute loading. 
I also like to use a deficit here, either by taking a snatch grip or standing on a platform. This increases the range of motion that's available, and it's useful from a resilience perspective as well as for hypertrophy. But no matter what your favorites are, you should hinge often, you should hinge with a high level of effort, and you should rotate through multiple different variations over time to become strong and skilled at all of them. And finally, we have perhaps the most controversial thing that I'm going to say today, and that is exercise number three. If you want to build a big deadlift, you should become a strong, skilled, and prolific front squatter. Now, I know, I know, front squats are totally worthless. Only Olympic weightlifters should do them. They have no value for strong men or power lifters or bodybuilders, and they offer absolutely nothing that you can't get from a high bar back squat, and even that they do far less efficiently. See, I know all of these things, guys, but I still can't help myself. Instead, I feel compelled to tell you that if you learn to love front squats, you will be rewarded with a stronger lockout on your deadlift, courtesy of the massive strengthening effect that front squats have on the erectors, specifically in the upper region of the back, a stimulus that is really hard to replicate elsewhere. I don't know if you can get it anywhere else. And you will be rewarded with a stronger pull off the floor, courtesy of the enhanced leg drive that you will be able to generate due to now having quads that are actually fucking strong. And this enhanced quad and erector strength has a synergistic effect. It's going to lead to you being able to hold better position off the floor, which is going to increase your efficiency up the chain of the movement. Better position off the floor means better position at the transition over the knees. Better position at the transition over the knees means better position at lockout, which means you will no longer be that guy who thinks that they can break any weight off the floor, but just has a weak lockout. And if you can only fix your lockout, you'd finally be a respectable deadlifter, right? <laughs> Basically, if you want a big deadlift, you should learn to love the front squat. Get good at it, get strong at it, and you will be rewarded with a cleaner and stronger and better deadlift. And that is among the thousand other benefits that front squats already offer. Yes, in case you can't tell, I am still rolling my fucking eyes at that silly Dr. Mike video. So there you go, guys. Three exercises that will make you a far more skilled and stronger deadlifter while also blowing up your back and posterior chain and making you a much more resilient, well-rounded, and versatile lifter. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Leave me some love in the comments down below. And if you're interested in training like me, check out www.oncareelitefitness.com for online coaching and training programs. Keep training hard, and I will catch you guys next time.